world. How are you everybody? Oh, just in time, eight o'clock. I only just made it. My last client ran a little bit late, so I had to almost boot them out of the door to make sure that I was here on time to say g'day for Confessions of a Conveyancer. So the backdrop's a little bit different today. I am at HQ at the office, so unfortunately no gizmo. Uh, he doesn't really come to work as much as I would love him to. He would destroy the place. So um, one of my clients today, we had an interesting topic and I just really wanted to cover that with you guys today. So something that often happens, and I'm just going to fix up this light a little bit. Uh, sorry, the light's a bit rubbish at the office. I don't have my nice fancy pants light. So today, one of my clients, uh, we were talking about them moving into their property prior to settlement. So they're buying a property and they've arranged to be able to move into the property early so that they can get their other property all vacant, ready to go, and we can settle them both on the same day. Now, this isn't that uncommon. You know, it does happen. We do organize things like this. But what I wanted to really talk to you about is what is the risks of moving in prior to buying a property. Hi, thanks for coming on. So a lot of people think that, hi, hi Tim, a lot of people think that moving into a property prior to settlement means that you're just going to be renting the property for a little while until you settle. And this is what I really want to do a bit more myth busters on. So the first thing is, when you do that, so you've moved in prior to settlement, number one, it doesn't create the same relationship as a landlord and tenant. So what does that mean? A landlord and tenant relationship, so that's when you sign a lease, you would move into a property that you were never going to buy, that gives a lot more rights to a landlord and also to a tenant, and you don't get that. So the major things are, one, while you're living there before settlement, if something blows up, if the electricity, oh sorry, if the heater stopped working, the water stops working, anything like that, there is no landlord responsibility. You've accepted the property exactly as it is. And so they're things that you need to think about. You've accepted it completely as it is. You've accepted all the inclusions there as they are. The vendor, the owner of the property, doesn't even have responsibility to insure the property anymore. So once you've moved in with that permission to move in, it's your responsibility to have the property all insured. Another thing is you start paying rates and water from the day you moved in, even though you're not the owner yet. So that is something to think about also when you're negotiating what type of fee that you want to pay prior to moving in. And another really one that actually happens is you've got to remember that moving in prior to settlement is like permission to stay there. That's it. Hi, Julie. And so if you are moving in prior to settlement, it also means that you can't do any renovations to the property until settlement's gone through. So you can't have these grand ideas of saying, I'm going to get the keys to the property two weeks prior to settlement so that I can paint it and rip up the carpets. It's going to be amazing for me to move straight in as soon as settlement's gone through. No, you can't do anything until settlement has all gone through. And of course, you've also got a responsibility to keep it in really good repair. So just to recap on that, if you have negotiated that you can move into a property prior to purchasing, that happens sometimes, it's totally okay, but you really need to understand that you're not renting it. It's just permission for you to be there. Often it's called an occupancy agreement or a license agreement, but it's definitely never landlord and tenant, which means that the landlord doesn't have to insure the property you do. You've accepted it as it is. So do you remember in some of my videos a little while ago, I talked about how important it is to do a pre-settlement inspection of a property before you get the keys on the day of settlement? Well, in this scenario, you really need to do the pre-possession inspection. So what that means is before you take the KKAS, before you pick up the keys, you need to make sure that you have done an inspection because the second you move in, even though it's only under license and you haven't paid for the property yet, you move in, 
You can't call me and say, oh, there's a smashed window or there's a burst water main. It's too late. You've already agreed to accept it as is. You've also um, indemnified the vendor from any risk or loss that includes public liability and everything. So it's just something to have a little think about. Moving in prior to settlement does happen a fair bit, um, especially when we're trying to buy and sell on the same day. We often arrange things like that. And it's just being really aware of what your risks are and really making sure you've got the insurance in place, you've done your inspections, and that you've really done a really good inspection because you don't want to be moving in and you haven't even paid for the property yet and you're noticing things wrong because then it's too late. So it's about taking that emotion away from those decisions, having a good think about it, making sure that you've got all the facts and knowledge in front of you before you just pick up the keys and move in. And it's a really good option so that you can buy and sell on the same day. But just remembering that all those rights that you hear that tenants get, you don't get if you're moving in prior to settlement. Hi, Marita. So gang, nice and short and sweet tonight. As I said, it was inspired by a little conversation that I had with someone today. And I just wanted to reiterate that to you because it's super common. But just remember that moving in prior to settlement is not the same as renting. You don't get all the responsibilities of a tenant and they don't get all the responsibilities of a landlord. Okay, so there is risk on you if you're the purchaser. All you need to do is chat to your conveyancer about it, but just be really aware of it, yeah? And also remember, when you're taking on that level of risk, you may also think that it's fair not to be paying as much rent. So if the market rent for a property was $400 per week, but you are going to be moving in under the license agreement prior to settlement, you might negotiate to pay a little bit less, say $380 a week, because remember that from the date you move in, you're paying rates and water and insurance, which normally you wouldn't be paying those if you were a tenant. So little things, just little trips and traps there to just think about. But listen, conveyances, your lawyer, your conveyancer, they will know everything about that. Just gives you an opportunity to think about it. That's it. So gang, there's so much happening here in the office. Um, sorry, Gizmo is not here with me today, but I'm still in the office um, and I'm sure you'll see him very soon. Really appreciate everybody shouting out, uh, enjoying the videos. It's, it's fun how many people have been saying that they've enjoyed learning something. So, you know, next time maybe I need to do a little, um, I might need to do a little Q&A quiz, see how you're all going out there. Especially some of you real estate agents that I've seen jumping on. It might be time to get a little bit interactive, uh, test your knowledge. And you know what? Test my knowledge. I love it. I love a bit of a challenge. So my confession, I always finish with a confession. My confession tonight is, uh, this probably won't surprise a few of you, right now my shoes are off 100%. As soon as it's five o'clock, as soon as I have my last client, my shoes come off, I'm barefoot, under the office table. That's exactly how it should be, yeah? Sometimes we just got to, oh, and also before I came on live, I did have Taylor Swift blaring. All right, gang, thanks for jumping on. So good to catch up with you. See you next week and Gizzy will be there. See you.